Hello, Year 9. Well, you've seen the play. You've done the whoosh, or rather we've done the whoosh. And now we're going to get into the uh, actual nuts and bolts of the play. Um, but before we do that, I want you to do the do now, which is finish these pairs. They're like pairs of people. Who do these people uh, match up with in the play? Beatrice and, Claudio and, Don John and, and Dogbury and. Um, five minutes to do that. And then on to the next slide, Year 9. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to analyse the nature of Beatrice and Benedict's relationship. That's the relationship at this stage in the play. Um, everything we do in these lessons is uh, contemporaneous, is to use the long word. It just means that we're doing it as we go along. We're, we're doing the analysis at the same time. Uh, Beatrice and Benedict is your title. Put that into your books and go on to the next slide. For this lesson, you're going to need a copy of the extract from uh, Act 1, Scene 1, which one I will attach uh, to class charts, uh, or a copy of the whole play if you've got one, and begin analysing that. I mean, I know a lot of you have got the uh, a copy of Much Ado About Nothing. If you can, get your hands on one, buy one, borrow one. Lots of people have them laying around the house and so on, and people don't mind you writing in it, then um, get hold of one. Um, if you don't, then it doesn't matter if, if you haven't got access to that, because I shall be putting the extracts onto class charts as we go along. Um, you need to be able to watch a clip of the scene as you as well as this summary of the scene's events to help you. There's the link there and some different coloured pens or highlighters. Can I watch this scene? Um, write down your first impressions of the characters after watching this scene where we see the two characters interact for the first time. Just make some notes about how you think they what what they mean to each other. Now, uh, what do you think is the history of their relationship? You can't possibly know for sure, but there obviously is something's gone on between them, hasn't it? People don't meet up and talk to each other like that. And by the way, this is, um, as I'm sure you've gathered, uh, a different version to the one that you watched. But that's a deliberate choice on our part because it gives you a chance to um, it gives a more sort of rounded perspective on the characters. Um, now, I want you to make notes. I don't want you to just copy this down. I want you to. Um, pick the bones out of each of these pa three paragraphs. Before we see Benedict on stage in this scene, Beatrice has been being rude about him. She calls him Signor Manta Mountanto, meaning someone who thinks highly of himself. She says this to a messenger. She says to a messenger that she had promised to eat every person that Benedict killed, implied that she didn't think him a very worthy soldier. She also suggests that he will be an annoying friend to Claudio. Oh Lord, you will hang upon him like a disease. He's not a very nice way to talk about someone, so they've clearly got history. And it, well, I mean, I've seen this so many times now, but I mean, even the first time I saw it, it's clearly um, a romantic history of some sort, which has left um, particularly uh, Beatrice a little um, cynical about uh, Benedict. Leonardo describes their relationship as there being a kind of merry war between Sir Benedict and Beatrice. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Um, so they can't meet up without taking the mickey out of each other. Uh, we see this exchange in the first argument. The battle of words shows their similarities as they compete to be the most quick-witted when replying. In, in this argument, we also get some clues that there is history to this relationship when Beatrice says, I know you of old. We also know that they take an interest in one, an one another, even though they might profess not to like each other. Even when Beatrice tells Benedict, nobody marks you, which means no one's listening, she is listening. She's listening to him. It's often described as a love-hate relationship. You may know people like this, or you may have had or be in a relationship that's like this. They have arguments. Some could some could describe as flirtations because they like to battle with one another. I mean, if they really disliked each other, they just keep out of each other's way, wouldn't they? So I don't want you to copy. Well, you can copy them down if you want, but um, I think a better way of doing this would be for you to. Uh, pick out what you consider to be the most important parts of those three paragraphs and uh, and write them down. Now here's some language which um, we can't, um, or rather you can't be expected to know necessarily. Um, and this is always going to happen in Shakespeare. When you come across a piece of language that you don't understand, as I've said to you before, and it'll become more important as you go into year 10 and 11 and you do um, uh, some more advanced texts, is that you don't, when you come to a word you don't understand you don't see it as a blockage you just see it as a hurdle and a hurdle is something you can jump over by finding out what it means or simply walk around it and ignore it you don't necessarily in fact you don't have to know what every word in a text means you can tell uh, from what's gone on around it in its context 
broadly what it means but some of these we need to uh, have a little more focus on so you could write these into into the back of your books in a in a, um, in a kind of Shakespeare glossary that we're going to have at the back uh, I won't read all these out you can see from the uh, from the arrows which ones mean what so get that into into the back of your books I'll give you five minutes to do that then on to the next slide now here we are I'm going to be uh, reading this to you I'm also going to be attaching this um, this extract from act one scene one to, uh, to to class charts for you to annotate but can you work out what they're saying in the argument using your word matchup definitions the thing we did on the previous slide have a go at writing a modern version of the argument. Um, I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. Um, but let's read it anyway. I mean, if we were in class, um, we'd, be, uh, we'd be acting this out. I wonder who would be, who would be Beatrice and who would be Benedict. Yeah, I don't know. But it'd uh, be interesting, wouldn't it? Nevertheless, um, here we are. I shall read it for you. Beatrice, I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marked you, Benedict. What, my dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Beatrice, is it possible disdain should die while she has such, such food to eat as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Benedict, then is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted, and I would have had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. Beatrice, a dear happiness to women, they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God of my cold blood, I am, your, I am of your humour, for I had rather hear my dog bark as a crow than a man swear he loves me. Benedict, God keep your ladyship in that in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. Beatrice, scratching could not make it worse, such a, to a, such a face as yours. Benedict, well you are a rare parrot teacher. Beatrice, a bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. Benedict, I would my horse have the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer, but keep your way, in God's name I have done. Beatrice, you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. They're not very well read there, but um, there we are. I want you to just go through using the glossary of words that we uh, that we did in the last slide and uh, see if you can write your own version of that argument. I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. And uh, here's my interpretation, a modern interpretation of that scene. Um, see if yours is something like that. I'm sure it is. And you can stop the slide there and have a look at that. Now I want you to use two colours to highlight the scene. In one colour, how does Benedict describe Beatrice? And in another colour, how does Beatrice describe Benedict? Benedict. And I've got some uh, some uh, notes for you there. But I'll give you uh, five minutes to do that, then on to the next slide. Now I want you to choose two of your quotations to explore. Write down the quotation and what you think it suggests about how the speaker feels about the other person. So one quotation for Benedict describing Beatrice, one quotation for Beatrice describing Benedict and um, explore it in the way that I've done here um, with, with this quote. Um, there you are, I'll give you uh, 10 minutes to do that. Right, so I want you to read over, read over the notes you have on the extract and the way the two characters describe each other. Can you identify the similarities between them? And here's some bullet points that I've come up with, which you may be able to add to. Um, both are proud of their quick-witted natures. Both suggest they want to remain single. Both make a big deal about being rude to the other. And see if you can uh, find out how their language echoes each other as they make puns and play with words. Five minutes for that, please, and then on to the next slide. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the uh, video that Mr. Ramdoni sent out today about um, how it is we want to um, look at your work. Uh, but lots of you have been sending me your work, which is brilliant, but we, uh, we need to streamline it a bit. So what we're going to get you to do is, as you've seen the video, it shows you how to uh, upload, <coughs> excuse me, upload the work onto uh, onto class chart so I can see that you've done it, give you an achievement point, and then once a week I will be looking, sorry, once a cycle I will be looking at a specific piece of work and uh, giving you feedback on it. Um, so there you are, we'll see, I mean this will take a few days to settle down year nine I imagine, so don't worry too much. 
um, from, from my end as well as yours because um, technology is not my strong suit but I'm sure we'll get it all worked out so any questions obviously drop me uh, drop me an email um, so your, your the task I want you to send me is who is Benedict who is Beatrice create a character profile for each of them jotting down key details you know so far about them you could draw a picture to go with them if you like and uh, include quotations I won't say try to to a group like you you should be including uh, quotations and if you want to do the challenge write a paragraph describing your thoughts about the relationship between them in this first scene and make sure you've included evidence evidence so you could say um, well I, I think that there's been some sort of romantic connection between them in the past that you uh, and this quote that I've picked shows that um, or, 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 or something like that so uh, there you are year 10 that's your task the one that I want you to uh, upload onto uh, class charts that shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes but it may do um, there you are well done for today um, next time we'll, we'll be focusing on another part of this uh, first scene where Claudio and Benedict discuss marriage um, if you want to read ahead of the scenes we will be looking at it's a good idea to use no fear Shakespeare's it's an online thing um, and it it literally translates Shakespeare into uh, what well, it Listen, I hate using that word translate because it's not a translation, it's English, right? It, um, it uh, adapts it into modern English um, and puts it alongside the, uh, the old version. And there's the link there. So have a look at that. Well done. And I will let's have a look. I'll speak to you again on Thursday. So enjoy. Any issues, email me. Other than that, upload the task that, we, that I've set today onto uh, class charts and we'll see how we all get on with that. Thank you, Year 9.